Let's move on to generating a table of authorities. We're going to use a similar but different tool than we used for the table of contents, and we're going to take a similar but somewhat different approach. So we're going to go back down to, through our document to find our first long citation for a case. Um, when doing table of authorities, obviously you're going to include any authority, uh, including statutes and the like, but for purposes of this video right now, we're just going to be working on cases. So my first long citation is right here, Anderson versus Liberty Lobby. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the references uh, ribbon up here. If you have an older MacBook, remember you might have to look under insert, index, and tables to get to the same spot. I'm going to open up a tool that we have not used before called Mark Citation. And I'm going to be using this throughout the document when I'm looking at multiple citations, so I'm going to leave it open. I'm not going to close it each time. So let's go ahead with our first step. I'm going to go to my long citation, highlight it. I'm not going to include the signal because I don't want that to show up in my actual table of authorities. So after highlighting it, I'm going to click inside the mark citation box. And this is what's going to appear in the table of authorities itself. Um, that shows up underneath my table of contents. The only problem right now is that there's a pin citation, and I don't want a pin citation, I just want to be citing the entire case. So I'm going to remove the pin citation right now. You want to make sure you have the right category selected. We're just going to be using cases, but you can see you have a number of options here. They're all legal categories. This tool is specifically was specifically developed with lawyers in mind. Um, if you want to edit any of these or you want to make a new category, you hit set category and here you can edit them um, or use one of these blank ones to, to create your own new category. Um, the other tool here is short, it says short citation. Um, what this does is it allows you to link short citations in your document with the long citation that appears in the table of authorities so that if you have a case that you've cited multiple times that appears on different page numbers all of those page numbers will appear in the table of authorities. So this is just a little internal note for you that'll make more sense in a minute. Sometimes people like to shorten it, so it's a little bit easier to find. So I'm gonna shorten it to just the two party names and get rid of the rest of the citation information. So now that I've done all of that, I'm going to click Mark. So you'll see that this created a kind of tag inside of my document. And if I want to unmark something, I actually just have to highlight this whole thing and hit delete. What this also did when I hit marked is it turned on the formatting in my document. It, it displays the formatting, all the hidden formatting, um, so that you can see the tags that you make. When we're done with the mark citation tool, we'll delete, excuse me, we'll hide all of that formatting again. So let's move on and find our next case. And the next case I'm going to select is going to be Grokster. So here's Metro Goldwyn Mayer, Studio, Mayer Studios. And just take it, highlight the long citation, leave everything else off. We don't need that explanatory parenthetical or anything. Um, and just click inside of the box. We're going to do the same thing we did last time. And we're going to get rid of the pin citation. And as you'll see in this document, um, I found out that it's going to be referred, this case is going to be referred to Grokster going forward. So I'm actually going to make my little internal note to myself, just have the party name Grokster there and get rid of everything else. Because again, if you're working on a long memo with lots of different cases, it's easier to just keep the screen a bit simpler. So now that I've gotten rid of the pin site, I've made my short citation. I made sure I chose the right category of cases. I'm going to go ahead and hit mark. And now so that I can demonstrate how the short citation tool works, I'm going to scroll down to Grokster as it appears as a short citation. So follow along. It's going to be a very similar process, but there's going to be a slightly different step at the end. So I'm going to select the short citation here. I'm going to click into the box just like I did last time, but I'm not going to hit mark. What I'm going to do instead first is hit Grokster. This is telling me that this text here is going to be associated with this long citation. So this page number that this text appears on will show up next to this long citation over here. So I'm going to go ahead now like I've done and hit mark. 
Okay, and you can even see here's the short citation here. So obviously, if you're working on your actual memo, this is going to take a lot longer, but this is the exact process that you would use. So now that I've done marking all of my cases, or at least all of the cases I'm going to use right now, I hit close. And you probably don't want to leave all this formatting showing. It might be sort of distracting. So I'm going to go back to the home ribbon and I'm going to click the show hide button right here. And I can turn all my formatting off or turn it back on as I please, but I'm going to keep it off right now. So we want to put the table of authorities underneath the table of contents on its own page. So I'm going to do what I did last time. I'm going to put the cursor um, before the statement of facts, go to layout, breaks, page break, so I have a nice clean page. I want to make sure that this is not marked as heading one. So you can see here the text is heading one because it's left over from statement of facts, but I'm going to put it back on normal. And now I'm going to go back to the references ribbon, and instead of hitting mark citation, I'm going to click insert table of authorities. So here's a nice little preview of my table of authorities. Um, because of some settings that I had on here already, um, my headings, the cases and statutes, are actually in Times New Roman already, which is what I want, but your version might not look like this. So if this is showing up as Calibri or Ariel or something instead, you hit modify and you hit table of authorities heading and then modify again and you would change that option over here to uh, Times New Roman. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And here is my nicely formatted table of authorities. And you can see here, I have two page numbers to indicate the long citation where it appeared and the short citation where it appeared. Um, just like the table of contents, you have to update this um, on your own. You have to take that extra step, so you hit right click, update field every time that you want to update it, just as you did with your table of contents.